coming to you. And we invite you to come into one of our services to bring glory and honor to God's name, to raise up a supernatural army with signs and wonders and miracles. Can you be part of this move? How do we expect to win our families if we are a bad example to them? Yesterday, same flea market, talking to this girl for years about getting in church, about smoking. I said, how are you doing with your cigarettes? She said, I'm doing better. I said, you go to church lately? She said, no. She said, I haven't shit much. She said, while we're talking about this, she said, my husband's not saved. He's an alcoholic. This was yesterday. She said, uh, and I went and rented that movie, Left Behind, and I wanted him to watch it. She said, uh, he says he don't believe in God, but he believes something's there. And she said, I told him he needs to watch it so he can go to heaven with us, because when the rapture takes place, me and my daughter is going to heaven. I said, no, you're not. How many of you know that? Caught everybody's attention in the place. All kinds of people waiting to pay her. I said, no, you're not. My Bible says if a man believes in God, he does well. The devil also believes in troubles. But will you know a great man your faith in God without serving God is like a dead body without spirit. Mm -hmm. It's worthless. So he watches, if he would, left behind and said, God, forgive me. But he don't serve God. Does he go to heaven? No! Amen. 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 I said, how can you be an example to your husband when you're not serving God yourself? Amen. Her God is Saturday and Sunday, they're definitely market. Work. Now, brother, I hope you don't understand. If I don't work, I don't eat, I don't pay bills. As you six, so was that. That's right. Don't look at the birds of the air. They show you need to reap together the mark, or you know what's better than them. Oh, ye of little faith. Yes. But seek ye first. Give them God his righteousness. Then all these things be added to you. Be That's done. Jesus speaking. That's right. That's, right. That's New Testament, Bell. Amen. He had to deal with the same situation. Yes. That's right. Help me here. Yes, amen. 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 Oh, everybody loves me. Nobody hates me. Woo, I just love preaching the gospel because what it just makes everybody love me truly. <laughs> I've been beat on, spit on, anything you can imagine. Wherefore, holy brother, hard takers of the heavenly calling, consider the, consider the apostle, high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful, who was what? Who was what? Faithful. Faithful to him that appointed him. As also Moses was what? Faithful. In all his house. There was what? Faith. Faithful. If a man desires an office of a bishop, let him first be found faithful. I want God to use me, but are you faithful? That's right. Talk to me For this man was kind of worthy, worthy, worthy of more glory than Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Wonder if God looks down on us and says, You're worthy. You're worthy. Or would he speak to us and say, like he did here a couple of nights ago, he said, Tell the people that is not strong and faithful that they're Useless. Ooh. That's right. That's right, Jim. Useless. That's right, Brother Jim. Tells like it is. Do you know back a couple weeks ago, I lost my teeth. <laughs> I have two missing out here. I've got a little plate, and I have one up here. I lost them. You all started to pray. I got the bottom back, but this is never come back. <laughs> but when I try to chew food, that spot is useless. <laughs> so I say, man, there's no toothy there. It's useless. My wife's mother, she had no teeth at all, but she said, if you make me mad, I'll gum you to death. 
<laughs> so we say amen. She can't bite the opinion, but she'll dump the opinion. <laughs> For this man is kind of worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he that has built the house has, has more honor than the house. Talking about Jesus. How many know we're supposed to represent and look like and act like who? Jesus. 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 Well, I want to be like pastor, evangelist, or so-and-so. I, I want to be like Moses. No. I don't want to be like Moses. I don't want to be like Elijah. I don't want to be like him. I want to be like Jesus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I still upset a lot of people when I say these words. I'm not a Christian. Ah! I'm not. First time I went to, Pastor gave, the minister gave an all a call and said, what do you want? What did you come to the altar? He knew me. knew of me. When went to the altar, been down. He comes over he says, Brother Humper, what do you need? What, what do you want? I said, I want to become a Christian. He said, I thought you were a prophet. I thought you were a minister. I said, I am. He said, well, I don't understand. What are you talking about? I said, I'm not a Christian. He said, what do you mean? I said, the word Christian means Christ-like, like Christ. I haven't got to that. That's right. So we say amen. Amen. I'm still working on it. Yep. So everybody says they're a Christian, are they? Jesus said, not only the works I've done, but these shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Has any of those works applied in your life? Yes. With the exception of walking on water. Raising the dead and all this and cast out the devil and handle snakes and all yes, yes. Why is it that we can't get to that kind of a place? Could it be because we're not strong? I hear people saying, I have a calling in my life. From preaching to teaching to all kinds of different things. But it seems like the doors just won't open up. Could it be that you're not found worthy? You're not sold out yet. Right. So we say amen. amen. You're not strong enough to lead somebody else. Talk to me. Amen. Do you want to fall fall a novic? A novic means a beginner, a weakling? You want to follow somebody that's, like James says, tossed to and fro up and down yeah. with every wave of doctrine? Mm -hmm. By the way, honey, you love preachers? You better, because you're going to marry one. <laughs> <laughs> and something else. You were born with a song in your head. Ooh, Jesus. God's going to use you mightily. Not just songs that you heard somebody else write mm. or sing. Mm. But God's going to give you songs in the midnight hour and you're going to wake up singing songs oh, to the Lord. Oh, and you're going to stand Jesus. before people and you're going to start to sing and people's going to weep and oh, cry and drop to the altar oh, because the words are going to reach into their heart. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's one reason I love Sister Shirley's song, yeah. Jesus. Oh, Lord, yes. It touches me. Yeah. The song you sang tonight. Yeah. It wasn't just singing, it was from your soul. You lived it. Yes. How many of you know if you're a preacher, God's going to be, you've got to be a thought author, author of what you're talking about. Yes. Yes, that's right. right. Teach me or train me, but you don't know what you're teaching and training. Somebody talk to me here. Amen. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses very truly was faithful in all his house as his servant. <laughs> see, I hear, please everyone pay attention. Please I do television land, radio land, wherever you might be, whatever land you might be in. You got to be a servant to the Lord. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammoth, the things of this world. I got a job and I got a family and I got responsibilities. That's why Jesus addressed what to sow when I sow the seed. 
Some fell by the wayside. The fowls there came to me. The devils came and took them off. Then he goes and he finishes off. He says, four things that happen. Why they don't bring forth? Because the cares of this world, the lust of other things, and the deceitfulness of riches yes. and the pleasures of this life. Yes. Choked it out. That's right. Yeah. That's right. When we put all these things together, he says, I can't use you. Yes. That's right. Oh, Jesus, use me. You want me to use you? I'm going to put you through training. I'm going to send you to the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Lord, I want you to use me, but I don't want to pay the price. Mm. I took a man down to see Brother Abraham D. Jesus probably 25, 30 years ago. This young man, his grandma raised him, had a mighty calling on his life. But he got himself into contracting, building houses and stuff, making big money. Ended up building a nice fancy house way up on a hill, had five acres of land, had a great big curved driveway, went up to it. And he would not go all the way with the Lord because he was caught up in his... We went down there, and Brother Angel, a man full of God, gifts of the Holy Ghost, called him out. He said, Did you that? God called you, preacher, raised by your grandma. I see your house set high on a hill with a big S driveway. You have five acres. It takes you such and such time to mow the grass. God said, Tell you, sell it, and go full time for me, and I'll bless you. He left. He was fighting mad. He said, I don't care what you say. He says, if God says, I'm not selling my place. He tried to start a church so called fleshly. He lost his wife. He lost his kids. He backslid on drugs and still backslid today. How many of you know God wants us to go full time? What will he require of us to use us? What will he require of us? He requires a million other things than they will you, but he's going to require. How many of you know when he draws us out, he draws us out and separates us unto himself? Yes. Anybody still here? Yes. He said, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. Come out from among this world. Be ye separate. Huh. And a servant for a testimony of those things which you spoke. How many of you know we cannot be a good servant, a good testimony, if our neighbors watch our lifestyle? How many of you know the Bible says we're a pencil, a letter, a written of all men? They see us and they know Sunday's supposed to be the Lord's Day, you should be going to church, and they see you laying home. Getting in your car going someplace, or getting in your truck going someplace, or going to work someplace. And you want to talk to them about them serving God when you yourself are not. You know what the Lord says that is? He says, You're neither hot nor cold, but you are lukewarm. I'll vomit you. You make me sick. Woo. You think God's going to call a whole lot of those people? To raise up a supernatural army? No. I told some people a while ago, I don't usually sit down and talk or pour out my soul and talk with people one to one unless I can see in the spirit of a great potential in them. If I can see in them that they're playing games, I don't waste my time. I have no good. I love that soul. I want that soul saved, but I have no good for that soul. If that soul wants to come and talk to me, spiritual things, I don't want to hear it. How can a flesh head talk spiritual things? 
Those are fleshly minded, minds are things of the flesh. Those are minds, spiritual mind, minds are things of the spirit. That's right. Those are fleshly, spiritual things are foolishness to them. Anybody getting anything? Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. How many would believe we're coming into the last day? Yes. 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 I'm telling you what. I'm telling the nation. I, I've spoken bottles in China and and, and the Russia and, and and the cotton. They're going to take me and kill me. But how many of you know you had to hear God what what to do and what not to do? Yes. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, That's right. but principalities, spiritual wickedness, yeah. principalities, mm. wickedness in high places. Yes. 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 You look at our government. You think that's a holy spiritual government? Straight from the pit of hell? Mm. And you think a wonderful Muslim president is for us? No. And you think it's going to get better? Do you know that in remote places in the United States is prisoner camps, sophisticated prisoner camps built for years, yeah. setting empty, waiting for who? Us. Us. Not the Muslims, not the border crossers, nope. but two groups of people. Nope. Christians nope. and Jews. Jesus. Yep. I was down in Washington preaching back a number of years ago. How many years ago was that? Brother Roger and I had seven years ago, eight years ago. Way back up in the hills of Washington State. There's a young man, big fella. He'd go up into the mountains under these big, big trees and, and the big limbs would come down and like kind of a, he'd fast and pray and seek God. And he watched one morning whole mountain top slide back and he watched these black things come out of it mm -hmm. and stay down close to the ground and disappeared. What were the black things? Black helicopters. Small helicopters. Mm -hmm. He also seen these men, women, dressed in these black uniforms with, with these hoods and so forth and masks. He thought he was on scene, but they came to him and told him, if you mention one thing, you're dead. Mm -hmm. He told me about a place in the side of the mountain where the old time there that was so-called called bandit, but military vehicles would come up and park along the road and people would go inside and stay just like a no, big mountain side and then just a store built on back in against the mountain. He said he went up to the door to look in, and he said his phone melted in his pocket. Always killed him. I said, uh, bunch of junk. I said, where's this place at? He said, I'll take you to it. He said, we're not staying right. I said, that's fine. You go on, clean that in time. I'll walk back. I walked back. Walked up that same building. Had my phone in my pocket. Always carried right here. When I put my head up against the glass, put my hands like this to look in, my head went BAM! Hit that window and my phone got so hot it almost burnt in my pocket. It did not melt it down, but a couple of days later it came back. How many of you know there's things going on that you and I don't have the faintest idea? Oh, amen. Amen. That's right. Right, We're watched by Big Brother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everything is set up right now for the Antichrist. The dream I had years ago, me and Brother Benny had walked down the road. I won't go into the whole dream. I've seen all these military trucks come by and run over everything. The Lord said, before the rapture, the United States will be the United Nations. How many of you know now you don't find, I know who our army man. You do not find the star on the side of vehicles anymore representing the United States of America. Mm -mm. Even the president's plane. You find on the side of the UN, the United Nations. Mm -hmm. They asked my cousin that just come back from, from uh, Afghanistan, 
when he went in. They asked this question. If you are given orders by the United Nations to fire upon your family or American citizens, will you fire upon them? If they don't say yes, they're out. America, a God for a nation? Obama addressed this. The public got too long ago and he said, America is not God fearing anymore, it's Muslim. They said the Muslim flag will fly over the White House very shortly. It's going to. You know why? Because there's not a Christian. Very few Christians out there to stand up. But Christ had been signed over, over his own house. Whose house are we? Now, the next word says, next word says what? Everybody, please. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's that word? Yeah. Yeah. If. Now, I'm a dumb old hill mother boy. Could somebody teach me English and tell me what if means? Conditional. Conditional. So you're telling me that it's a condition thing here. If you, if we hold fast the conference and the rejoicing and the, uh, the hope firm until the end. Oh. So we're not the house of the Lord Jesus Christ if we don't hold fast. Mm -hmm. That's right. What the belief is the devil going to come and plant in our mind that you're okay? You know how you try the spirits? Open up the Bible. If it says thou shalt not, and some says you can, say that's so devil. Yes. Somebody say amen? Amen. 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 That's right. <clears throat> Next verse. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of publication. In the day of temptation in the world. When your father said to me and proved me and, and saw my works 40 years, talking about what happened to people that did not obey God. Go ahead. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation that said, They do always err in the heart and they have not known my ways. How many of you know that applies for today? Yes. Err in the heart, not know my way. <laughs> You talk to people who say it's a Christian today, you say, God spoke to me, and say, huh? Huh? How many people God speaks? Yes. 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 Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. Yes. Another voice they won't follow. Yes. How can you hear him speak if you're not close to him? Yes. And want me to tell you something too? A lot of people don't want to hear his voice. <laughs> That's why that man ran from the sand. Because he knew I was going to give him some word and he didn't want to hear it. But how many know he's going to stand before God and give account of because he took off? Right. Yep. They do always err in their heart. They have not known my way, so I swear on that wrath. Can God have wrath? Huh? What is wrath? Wrath is like just angry or upset. That's ferocious to the point of almost uncontrollable. Destruction. Wrath. They do always... So, so I swear my wrath that they, they shall not enter into my rest. Now this rest, I want you to understand something here, what the rest is. It applies two things. Everybody say two things. Two yes. things. How many of you know there's a rest when we make it home to heaven? Yes. But he has also ordered a day of rest here on this earth. Yes. Called the Sabbath. Yes. The day of rest. Yes. That's right. That's right. Six days we can do our work, but the seventh belongs to him. That's right. And we're supposed to rest and get before him. Honor him. Not doing our own things, our own ways. See our own words, find our own pleasures. Come on. That's right. So I swear on my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brother, lest there be, be 
in, in and you and you were hard up on believing in part of God. What's you saying? What, what's it say here? An evil heart of all belief in departing from the living God? I don't believe that. <coughs> God's love. And God would never put people in hell. God knows I ask him to forgive me. I want to go to heaven. And he's definitely not going to send me to hell. What's saved? Always saved. Can't lose your salvation. You say the if? How many read the if? Yes. Yes. That's conditional. That's right. An evil heart of departing from the Lord. I don't believe it that way, Pastor Jim. You ever have somebody tell you that? I don't believe I have to do that. We had a number back here a number of years ago. I seen great potential in him and his wife. Well, actually, how they ended up here, I was preaching someplace, the Lord called them out and told him that he was going to marry that girl over there, and they was going to have this baby, and the boy girl, whatever it was, that incisive, and they had it. So when we started the ministry, they came in, and thus and thus, and so forth. And I watched the guy grow. And Tom came, I asked him if he'd be an elder. He was so happy. But! As time went along, we had another woman in here, nothing but a troublemaker would follow behind what I preached, so we'd sneak up behind and try to talk to other people. Mm -hmm. Actually, didn't know who I'm talking about. And his wife, she's always being low cut. And I told the people that God gave us a dress code here. That's right. Women, you're supposed to cover up yourself. Mm -hmm. So I say amen. That's positive. No short dress, no blue cuffs, that goes for guys and so forth too, you know. And I told, said that the elders and so forth had to be dressed a certain way and so forth. So he comes to me. The Lord told me, he said, he's coming. He's gone, I want to quit. He said, Brother Humphrey, can I talk to you? I took him out there in the kitchen where we talk a lot of times. I knew. I said, I know what you're going to say before you say it. He said, well, let me tell you what. He said, you have dress code and stuff here. And he said, that things are pretty tight here. He said, I can go to other churches where we can dress where we want to, and thus and thus, and so forth. And he said, uh, so I resign my position. I said, give me your hand. He took his hand, great, bless him. You want to see a mess today? Go hmm. look at them. Secretary for Upper Room Ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray lay hands on you and your knees and expect signs and wonders and miracles in your life starting today you will never be the same our website is upperroomministry.net if you would like to schedule a speaking engagement contact our ministry all glory to jesus amen amen